While I will always be a huge advocate of working to improve problem soil, I've seen improvements in my clay that I didn't think were possible. There are some situations where my go-to soil improving tactics are not my first option. Now, a great example of this is this area that I'm standing in now. This is a very low lying area. It's very heavy clay and it's very poor drainage. And while given enough time, I have no doubt that I can improve this soil. Be sure to check out my improving clay soil video for those tips. In this particular spot, I wanted a little bit of a quicker fix. Enter Hoogle Culture. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Hugel culture, let me give you a quick background. Hugel culture is a German word which roughly translates to hill or mound culture. And what it is essentially doing is replicating that wonderful decomposition that you would find on someplace like a forest floor. So think about in a woods or a forest, all of those rotting branches and logs and leaves decomposing and what you end up with is this wonderful rich humus. And the beauty of Hugel culture is you can recreate that type of soil anywhere that you want to grow. Now, not only do you end up with wonderful soil, but you get the added benefits of improved fertility, improved water retention, but also improved drainage, and you're feeding all of those wonderful little critters in the soil as well. Hugel culture beds utilize a lot of natural material. Typically, the base layers are constructed with things like logs, branches, and sticks, and then filled in with materials like grass clippings, straw, or leaf mulch. And being as I live on a partially wooded lot and there are always plenty of things like sticks and leaves to clean up anyway, I decided that Hugel culture would be a great fit for my little homestead here. Hugel culture beds can be constructed directly on top of existing lawn or garden beds, or can be created by first digging a trench and then partially submerging those materials in the trench. And one of the biggest deciding factors as to which way to build your Hugel bed is whether you have topsoil available to cover up the bed when it's finished. When I built my first bed, I opted for starting directly on top of the ground. No digging needed. But we were having construction done at the time and I had piles of dirt that I could easily cart over from the construction site and dump on top of my hugel bed. For my second bed, I chose to dig a trench in the ground and I will use that displaced soil to cover my hugel bed once I've added all my fill materials. So once you've decided whether to dig a trench or build on top of the ground, the basic hugel culture construction is as follows. The first step is to arrange logs in the size and shape you want your beds. I prefer using partially rotted logs if available, only because they will break down and convert into soil more quickly, but logs which have not started to break down yet will work also. Remember that hugel beds can be any size or shape you wish. Generally, I find that making them about three feet wide and three to four feet high is easiest for me to work with, but beds can be as wide or tall as you like and round, rectangular, spiral, your imagination is the limit. Schooner Farms in Weston, Ohio has a hugel culture replication of the Great Serpent Mound. Next, pack leaves, straw, wood chips, or other organic material tightly in between the logs, and then add smaller branches and sticks to build up the frame of your bed. You can also frame beds in if you prefer, using things like the wood you'd use for raised planting beds, logs, or stones. Pack more straw, grass, or leaves in between the smaller branches. I also like to add all the plants I'm cleaning out of my garden at the end of the season, especially plants with woody stems and stalks like corn or castor beans, things that don't break down quickly, kitchen scraps or things that would normally go to the compost pile, 
as well as the bedding that I clean out of my chicken coop in the spring or fall to my hugel beds. Then add a heaping helping of finished compost or aged manure and finish it all off with topsoil. I prefer to cover that topsoil with a natural mulch or plant the whole thing with cover crop. Last fall I mulched heavily with leaf mulch and this summer I planted a cover of cow peas. Now the general recommendation is to wait a few months for your beds to cure or to begin that decomposition process prior to planting. The optimal time is going to depend a little bit on how rotten all of your materials were to begin with. Just keep in mind that the breakdown of all of that wood in these beds is going to rob nitrogen, especially during that first year. So if you are planting, you might consider some nitrogen supplementation. My first bed was built in the fall of 2020 and I didn't really want to put any cash crops in it the first year out. So this summer, the summer of 2021, I planted it with a cover of cowpeas and just threw some of my extra seedlings in there to see how they would do. I did some tomatoes and peppers. I had like a volunteer gourd in there amongst other things. And to my surprise, everything really thrived in that Google culture bed. Even if you don't have a serious problem area in your garden like I do, you might consider building a hugel culture bed, especially if you or one of your neighbors happens to have like a down tree or a lot of materials that you need to get rid of anyway. Hugel culture beds are fantastic in that they are essentially a self-watering, self-feeding, no-till system. That very gradual breakdown of wood in these beds is going to act as a long-term, slow-release source of food with the exception of that first year where some of that nitrogen gets tied up. But after that, the nitrogen is going to be released into the soil and be more available to the plants that you want to grow. The logs in this system also work to retain water, saving it up until dry periods and then releasing it into the soil around it. And as the logs and twigs and branches decompose, they're naturally leaving gaps and spaces in the soil, providing for excellent aeration for your other plants. So no tilling and no working of the soil is necessary. Now as an added bonus, this breakdown process also helps to slightly warm the soil, which is especially beneficial if you're growing in a colder climate because it allows you to get out and plant just a smidge earlier than you would be able to plant in your cold garden beds in the spring. Related to that, it can also help to ripen up some of your warm weather crops even more quickly. Hugo Culture has been a great option for my little garden here, and I plan on building more beds here as well as at my mom and dad's place. And I'd love to hear from you. Do you Hugel or do you plan to build a Hugo Culture bed in the future? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you found today's video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel, Growfully with Jenna. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.